So we economists like to talk about markets a lot, supply and demand, where people are selling things and demanders would like to buy things. And markets generally work pretty well. People make things or they supply a service and then the de demanders buy it. And there is an appropriate amount. The correct amount is being produced and everything that is being produced is being bought and everything works out very well. But sometimes this is not the case. And when the market doesn't work, we want to understand why. So when the market's not working very well, we call this a market failure. Either too much of something is being produced or not enough or there's something that people would like to buy or a service people would like and it's just not being supplied at all. And sometimes there are systematic reasons why there's too much or not enough or nothing being produced at all. What I want to talk about today is the difference between private goods, which work well in markets, and public goods that are something that can usually only be provided by the government. And we're going to talk about why that is. So, private goods versus public goods. First, let's talk about private goods. It could be a service as well, or things like painting services. So here's a guy that you might want to hire to paint your house. Here's a pizza. That's an example of a private good. A carrot is something that is a private good. Other examples would be things like electricity, or cars, or houses. These are all things that are private goods. And things that are private goods, things that markets work very well for people to exchange, to buy and sell, have two characteristics generally. And these two characteristics we say that private goods are both rivalrous and excludable. So let me write private goods here. Private goods are rivalrous and excludable. Now rivalrous means that if more people want to try to get the benefits from a service, or if more people want to enjoy a good, then you need more of it. Or everybody's going to get less if you don't have more of it, if you don't spend more for the good. So if everybody in town tries to use the same painter, we're not all going to get our houses painted at the same time. We're either going to have to wait longer or we're only going to be able to get part of our house painted. If everybody tries to eat the same pizza, we're all going to get less pizza. So we have to spend more. Or if we don't spend more to make more pizza, we're all going to get less pizza. Or we're going to get less quality pizza. Same thing with carrots or electricity or houses. If we all try to sh share the same amount of electricity, we all have to get less. So that's the idea of rivalrous. The opposite, if there was something that we didn't need more of, we'd call it non-rivalrous. Now, another key feature of a private good is that private goods are excludable. Excludable is the idea that if you don't pay, we can keep you from getting it. Now, this is a key feature that if you're going to have a business and you want to make money in a private market, then you need to be able to keep people from getting something if they don't pay. So that's the idea of excludable. Something is non-excludable if we can't force people to pay and they still get the benefits. So these are all examples of private goods and the market works pretty well for private goods. Now let's talk about public goods. This is where the market failure idea comes in. Generally with a public good, public goods are not going to be provided unless the government provides them. Now why is that? Well, they're the opposite of private goods. Public goods have these two characteristics. They're non-rivalrous, which means that we don't need more of them just because there are more people. We don't need to spend more just because there are more people. And they're non-excludable, which means we can't make people pay they're going to get the benefits whether they pay or not. We cannot exclude anyone. The best example of something that is a public good is national defense. Suppose you wanted to start a business to provide national defense for a small country that didn't have it. You might hire some soldiers. You might build some walls like in this picture here. And after you hire the soldiers and you build the walls, you go out and try to sell national defense. You knock on people's doors. And you say, hey, I've got a great service for you. It's national defense. All you have to do is pay us some money every month and we'll ensure that your home is not overrun by invaders. People are going to quickly figure out that whether they pay or not, they're going to get the benefits. 
that public good, that national defense, is non-excludable. Just because one house doesn't pay, you're not going to be able to allow them to be attacked by the invaders. Now, another characteristic that's interesting about something like national defense is it's non-rivalrous. If you've built the walls and you have the soldiers on the walls preventing people from invading, then if people in your country start to have more children and the population increases, you don't need more national defense. You don't need more walls or more soldiers on the walls. You're either preventing invasion or you're not. National defense is a good example of something that must be provided by government. Otherwise, it's hard to charge people. People usually aren't willing to pay for something that they could get for free because you can't exclude them. So the two key, key things to know about public goods are, number one, that governments usually have to get involved in providing public goods. It's important to realize that just because the government provides something does not mean it is a public good. A public good has to have these two characteristics, non-rivalry and non-excludability. If it's a public good, then normally it's a good idea for government to supply it because they can tax people to pay for national defense and other public goods. A private business is not going to be able to do that. The second thing that's important about public goods is that some people, when they don't pay and they get the benefits, we call them free riders, and we call this the free rider problem. If some people do pay and others don't, the free riders are getting the benefit at the expense of the people who do pay for the good. So the free rider problem is why some of these things will not be supplied unless the government actually supplies them. So private goods are rivalrous and excludable. Public goods are non-rivalrous and non-excludable. Let's look at these examples to determine whether they are public goods, private goods, or something in between. Roads, I would call a private good because they're rivalrous. You need more lanes or traffic's going to slow down. They're also excludable because you could have a toll road and keep cars off if they didn't pay. So they're private goods. A fireworks display is a good example of a public good because if you have more people watching, you don't need more fireworks. They can all look at the same ones. They are non-excludable because it's hard to keep people from looking up in the sky to see the fireworks. Fish in the ocean are rivalrous because the same people can't catch the same fish, right? And also non-excludable because it's very hard to keep people from going way out in the ocean and fishing. So fish in the ocean, they're not a private good and they're not a public good. They're something kind of in between. An MP3 of a song, I would say non-rivalrous because... You and your friends could share the same MP3. You just make lots of copies. However, when it comes to excludability, I put a question mark here because the law says you're not supposed to copy that MP3. And music companies could exclude people with the law, but it's practically hard to do. Healthcare and schools are private goods. There are private hospitals. There are private schools. They're both rivalrous because you need more doctors or teachers to provide more health care or education. And they're both excludable because you could prevent people from getting the services if they didn't pay. Now, lighthouses and fire protection are a little more controversial. A lot of textbooks and professors would say that these are public goods. I disagree, and many other economists do disagree. Lighthouses are non-rivalrous because many ships can look at the same lighthouse, but they have been shown to be excludable if the lighthouse is tied to a certain port. When ships come into the port, you make them pay a fee to support a lighthouse, and some businesses have done it this way. Fire protection is both rivalrous and excludable because you need more firemen and more fire trucks to service a larger population. And fire protection is also actually excludable. You could have a business where you don't put out a fire if people don't pay. And many insurance companies in history have done it exactly this way. They have firemen that only respond if you've paid for your fire insurance. 